Welcome to Mile High Reefers. I'm Scott Anderson, and today we're gonna to talk about one of the biggest, coolest fish in this tank, and that's the Vlamingi tank. And this is my Vlamingi you're looking at. I bought this fish right after Reefstock 2016, which makes him about four years old. Now, when I bought this fish, he was a little juvenile, and when they're juveniles, they are kind of a gray, almost drab looking fish with some blue spots on them. They may not be the most beautiful fish in the world when they're small, but they are absolutely amazing when they get big. The fish we're looking at today is about four years old and in human terms, he's a teenager. These fish are reported to live almost 40 years in the wild. Not sure how accurate that data is, but tangs are generally a very long-lived fish. And this fish, the bigger and older he gets, the more colorful he will get. These fish are found throughout the Pacific and Indian Oceans, basically from East Africa all the way to reports of them in the Galapagos. So if there's a reef in the Pacific, there's a good chance there's going to be flamingos there. In fact, I worked with a guy from Guam who would actually spearfish these right off of his back dock in Guam. He showed me pictures of huge flamingos and unicorn tangs he was pulling out. He said they're fantastic food fish. These really aren't a fish that are used for commercial reasons for anything other than the aquarium industry, but they are a common food source for the people in the part of the world they're found in. So either for sport fishing or for actual food and sustenance for the native people. But for us, we're aquarists, aquarists, and our goal is to keep these fish alive and as long as possible and as healthy as long as possible. So these fish are really easy as far as tangs go. They are more peaceful than most. There's a general rule with tangs that says don't mix genuses. The Glamingi tang is of the genus Naso, which means it's the same genus as your standard Naso tang, the big unicorn tanks, and of course, it's of Lamingi. So it's part of that genus. They do well in groups. In big aquariums, personally, I would not put multiple flamingos in a smaller tank. And when I'm talking about a smaller tank, I'm talking about basically six, eight foot tanks. Tanks that for most aquarists are massive. When it comes to tank size for this fish, I wouldn't get anything less than a six foot tank. And if you're getting a six foot tank, the biggest one you can afford is better. But the reality is, these fish can max out at over two feet long, which means my 210 gallon reef will be too small for this fish at its maximum size. Now these fish rarely grow to their max size in the aquarium, but the day may come where I need to rehome this fish and I do know people with really big tanks and I also know some people with public tanks. So there are options for me, but really that's something you need to think about before buying this fish. And in fact, that's the biggest downside to the Vlamingi and it may be the biggest upside depending on the, si the size of your tank. These fish get huge. The center of this tank is where this fish hangs out for a fair bit of the day. He kind of just floats there and enjoys life. But as the evening comes or he's a little stressed out, he'll swim back and forth. So a lot of space is needed. But as you can see, he doesn't really seem stressed out by the size of this tank. And as far as relative terms, he's about the size of a big yellow tank in a 75 gallon tank in my 210 gallon aquarium. So he's really in good shape for the time being. When it comes to flamingos, they are a tang, so there's a couple of diseases we need to think about. One is 
head and lateral Lyme disease. This is generally thought to be a nutrition disease. So we need to feed our fish well. I feed mine nori, which is seaweed, new life spectrum pellets, and a frozen food like LRS or rods. They do really well on those. My fish has become really picky about the food he eats. He goes for the nori, he goes for the frozen, but he has stopped eating the pellets. I guess when you're the biggest fish in the tank, you can pick and choose what you eat. But as you can see, he's a big fat fish. He's not starving. The other disease we need to worry about are the parasites, like ick or marine velvet. As most of you know, my tank does have ick in it, and so far this tank, ha this tang has had very few problems with it. At most, I've seen a couple of spots in the entire four years I've owned it. But he is a skinned fish, so these are diseases we need to watch for. Personally, I would say quarantine every fish that goes into this tank, including the big flamingi itself. I would make that a rule for any aquarium, but parasites and tangs are a real problem. So it's something you have to think about. As far as choosing the gender, I really can't find much that shows what a male flamingi looks like and what a female flamingi looks like. Really, I would guess the males are gonna have the longer streamers and the more of a bulge on the head. But since those do not develop until later in life, odds are when you buy your fish, you're really not gonna know. Judging by the streamers coming off of this fish's tail, I think there's a good shot. We got a big male sitting here, but really I can't find too much on sexing flamingos. If you're watching this video, there's a good chance you're thinking about buying a flamingo. They are beautiful fish. They get along with just about everything in the tank. They're big, they can fend for themselves. I've seen minor aggression out of mine over the years. The biggest problem with this fish is it gets so big and it needs a really, really big tank. So if you wanna buy a flamingi, you need to provide that tank. These are also fast growing fish. So I would not buy a flamingi with the idea that you're gonna upgrade later. These things can grow inches per year and unless you're really planning an upgrade soon, this is not a fish to buy with the idea of a long-term upgrade. They just grow fast and they need a lot of space. The other problem is, is they start off very small and very drab. And if you're one of those people who has to have instant gratification and you're not willing to wait for that fish to grow big and beautiful, get a regular naso. For me though, one of the great things about owning this fish has been watching it go from that little gray fish to this big, beautiful fish. And the reality is, is as he gets bigger, he's only gonna get prettier. He's gonna gain more color, his head is gonna bulge out even more, his fins will get longer, they'll gain more color. These are some of the most beautiful fish, but to get there, they have to get huge. You won't find many huge ones for sale, but they are available, though for many reasons, the large ones are very expensive. So should you get one? If you have the tank, and it's big enough, absolutely. These are fantastic fish, and when they're relatively small, they are very inexpensive fish. So the Vlamingi Tang for me has been an amazing fish. I've absolutely loved having this fish in my aquarium, and he is one of the greatest fish I've ever personally owned and I look forward to many more years with this big flamingi until the day when I finally have to get rid of him because he's outgrown this tank. So thank you for watching this episode of Mile High Reefers. Like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.